saw some familiar names, uh, Lori, Judy Zauderer, um, welcome. Um, I'm very glad that you've taken the time to join me today. Uh, since this is the last webinar, um, let's try and have a lot of fun, okay? So I'm gonna start you off with a very, uh, what I think is a very provocative question. Are you up for that? Are you up for that? Yeah. Um, my staff here is monitoring your hands up. So here's the provocative question. We're going to take about five minutes to go into small groups and answer a question. And here's the question. What's the one thing that everybody wants? the one thing that everybody wants. And in your group, take a minute to introduce yourself to your uh, group members. Um, come up with a uh, one word uh, best answer from your group discussion. And then we're gonna have one person post that word on a whiteboard that you'll see up when you come out of the group. All right, so have fun. All right, so it looks like everyone is back from their breakout rooms. And uh, for those who are new to Zoom or new to annotations, I'm just going to give quick instructions so everybody knows how to use it. So if you are on a laptop or desktop on and on the Zoom window, you should see a green box that says you are viewing group screen. Next to that is a black box that says view options. Click on the down arrow next to view options and select the annotate feature. You will then see a variety of ways to text, stamp, draw, etc. For this session, you can text or draw your comments and answers. If you're using a tablet or mobile device, the annotate function may show up in the lower left-hand screen of your window in the form of a pencil and a circle that says roof screen. Touch that icon and you should be able to annotate. If you are not able to annotate at all, you can share your comments in the chat and I'll read them out for you. N, oh, normalcy, ah, okay, yeah. Ah, oh, there's Judy Zadara. Judy, what are you writing? Hap happiness, happiness, I guess, right? Connection. Acceptance, yeah. Happiness. Well-being, respect. How are we doing, uh, Bree? Um, I think people are still annotating. Okay. Um, but there was only seven, seven breakout rooms. So okay. that actually might be everybody. Okay. So security no normalcy. That's an interesting one. Connection, well-being, respect, happiness, acceptance. So um, I'm going to tell you what the Dalai Lama said. Uh, and we could probably erase the, the annotations there. Um, so the Dalai Lama said that at the root of everything, what people want is they want to be happy. He said the very purpose of our life is to seek happiness. And things like connection and well-being 
ultimately bring happiness. So I think in some ways we're all saying the same thing. So I guess the next logical question in these uh, uncertain times in this new normal is if happiness is something that we all aspire to, how are we doing? How are we doing? Um, do, so here I have a screenshot of a pina colada on the beach, right? How about a pina colada on the beach? Would that bring us lasting happiness? Mm, no, not lasting, but it might bring us a few moments of pleasure, right? But then um, it could start raining on us. Um, maybe we would start frying in the sun. Um, and then of course we could finish our drink and want more. Um, so it's, it's not a lasting kind of happiness. I do hear you though, believe it or not, you're probably thinking, so what? A few moments of a pina colada on a beach is something that I could really go for about now, right? This straight shot of this new normal life is uh, getting a bit uh, wearing. You can take your breath away, in fact. So the truth is a pina colada on the beach or whatever you choose to distract you from this straight shot of this life is gonna be fleeting. And so we often continually rather look for distractions. For example, okay, these are just some of my distractions. Maybe you can relate to these. Um, how about eating chocolate? Yeah. How about just eating? Shopping on Amazon? Or maybe overworking? So you feel like you're getting something done? How about checking your messages, watching TV, keeping yourself forever on the go, crossing things off your to-do list? And some of our distractions are far from a pina colada on the beach. They're actually rather annoying distractions, like procrastinating, putting off stuff we don't like to do. That's a distraction, believe it or not or worrying about the future, ruminating about the past and regretting how you acted, what you might have done differently. Or maybe you're thinking about what people have done to you. These are all distractions, right? Um, distractions of any kind do not contribute to, to lasting happiness. So I'm going to give you a definition of true happiness. And this definition is from Matthew Ricard. He's a brilliant uh, Buddhist monk and he's often been labeled the happy, happiest man in the world. And he said, happiness is this, and you can read it. A deep sense of flourishing that arises from an exceptionally healthy mind. It's not a mere pleasurable feeling or a fleeting emotion. It's not a mood, it's an optimal state of being, regardless of external circumstances. It's a profound emotional balance struck by a subtle understanding of how the mind functions. So the good news is that we don't have to give in to our distractions as abstract as this definition may sound at the moment. We do not have to say yes, sir, to our monkey mind. <clears throat> Let me introduce you to monkey mind. <clears throat> so monkey mind is this voice inside of our head that is always speaking to us. Blah, 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 right? Uh, it's, it's jumping around from one thing to the next. And if you listen, you can hear it. Like you're listening to me and if I could see you, which I cannot, uh, Brie can see you probably. Uh, it probably looks like you're really paying attention. Um, like your body is there. And is there a voice in your head 
right now wondering what you might have for lunch as soon as this is over, right? Or maybe you're starting to cr critique me. Should I have really gotten onto this show, this presentation, really? Good use of my time, I don't know. The point is, if you're in what's called monkey mind, uh, you are somewhere else, even if your body is here. And so we're not present when we're in monkey mind, which is most of the time. And that includes when we're sleeping, right? And this has tremendous repercussions for us because our mind creates our reality. So just think about the last meeting you attended on Zoom where you thought you were just oh, so brilliant, right? You were just amazing, only to learn later that um, people were talking about you, thinking totally differently, that you actually acted like a real jerk. So their minds create their realities, okay? So monkey mind keeps us from being present. It distracts us. And this, is, this fact, has enormous consequences for how we live and how we lead. And if monkey mind is running the show, we can't muster all our resources. We can't live our best life possible. So we could, we could um, say to monkey mind, hey, stop ordering me around, just stop it. I've had enough. Is that gonna work? The answer is uh, no, unfortunately. Um, look, most of us know that we are hardwired, right? From caveman days. Um, we're hardwired to fight, flee, or freeze when we're faced with a threatening situation. What we may not know is we have some other embedded or inherited regularities, we could call them, that are part of our evolutionary legacy. And these uh, tendencies are designed to promote our survival, not our lasting happiness which is to say, we do not come into the world as a blank sheet of paper, okay? Our brains have very, very complex architectures that predispose us to act in certain ways, especially under threat. And this preconditioning, this hard wiring that we come into the world with predisposes us to monkey mind, okay? So um, this is operating all the time. Monkey mind controls us even if we don't know it. And this leads to this huge problem, which I call the problem of I, me, and mine, okay? And this is the story we tell ourselves about the life we are living in. Our story is so pervasive that we don't even know we're living in a story, right? We assume that me, me, Ruth, has a solid identity. And you, Laurie, you're a different person than me, okay? And then we endow ourselves with opinions and um, feelings, and we feel compelled to live and defend our story. So here's the point I'm getting to here, and this is going to depress you before lunch. So let me apologize here, I'm very sorry about this. Monkey mind is our living proof that as human beings, we are not in control of our minds. And our minds are not rational. We make choices based on our thoughts and emotions that are being jerked around all the time. 
And then after we make these choices, we rationalize why we did what we did afterwards. And we rationalize it, what we did based on the story we think we're living in. So the way we see the world depends on the story that we're living in. And the more we're fixated on our point of view, the less we are aware of everything else. So instead of opening to include, we're narrowing to decide what's best for me. So if we want to be as open as possible to the full range of information available in each single moment, in each second, in every now, <laughs> there is no better way to do that than cultivating our ability to rest in what I'm calling inherent awareness. It's our basic consciousness. Instead of a mirror being held up to ourselves, reflecting our own point of view, we can make use of a bigger mirror altogether. Inherent awareness is like a mirror. A mirror is not hardwired. It doesn't have conditioned responses. It reflects everything as it is that comes before it. So a mirror is not judgmental. It reflects what is. And when we learn to rest, just rest into inherent awareness, <clears throat> we realize that our mind is like a mirror. It's actually like a cosmic mirror. It can actually accommodate without judgment, without story, without the white noise of monkey mind in the background. So here's a quote from me. <laughs> Until we begin to recognize monkey mind, we cannot reliably connect with our inherent awareness, our deeper consciousness that is like the dance floor on which all our monkey moves occur. So it's a problem if we don't recognize our monkey mind. It's a problem and it's also a, a determinant of the quality of our life altogether if we recognize or we don't recognize monkey mind. Being in our own story limits how much we can understand about ourselves, how much we can understand about others, how much we can understand about the world altogether around us. And this has implications for how we live and how we lead. So, <clears throat> Here's the good news, if you're still with me, if no one's left, I think we still have everybody, good. Um, we can break the spell of monkey mind. Uh, to do so, you have to have a very strong intention and commitment to do so, okay? Because it requires inner work to connect to our deeper consciousness, to connect to our inherent awareness. And there are many names, by the way, I'm calling it inherent awareness, but there are many names for this deeper consciousness. Maybe you've heard some of these. Um, transcendental consciousness, pure consciousness, the absolute the still point, silence itself, essence,
consciousness with no thought, peaceful abiding, and so on. So Thich Nhat Hanh, just celebrating his 94th birthday, says, no mud, no lotus. I love that expression. The beautiful lotus flower flowers from mud, okay? Without mud, the lotus could not flower. So you could think of monkey mind, monkey mind as the mud from which the lotus of our inherent awareness flowers, emerges. So from this perspective, monkey mind is in so awful after all. Taming our monkey mind <clears throat> becomes the medium we have to work on ourselves. So another way of saying it is monkey mind is actually a gift to us <clears throat> because the energy that's trapped in all this noise, blah, 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 has great power if we can tame it if we can use the energy of monkey mind for a greater good. So we train our minds, which is the inner work, so that the deeper qualities of our mind can flower. And that means connecting with how our mind works. And as we do this work, which we're actually gonna do together in this talk <laughs> in a few minutes, um, we begin to actually have the feeling that when things become more spacious in our consciousness, monkey mind kind of settles down in the space. And in this way, we can attain an optimal state of being. We can attain this uh, profound emotional balance that Matthew Ricard includes in his definition of lasting happiness. So what I'm here to say is, and as a professor of leadership at Key, what I'm here to say is that this inner work as leaders should be our most important goal connecting with our minds and becoming familiar with how our minds work. It will benefit us because it will connect us to lasting happiness. It will benefit the people we lead and the organizations we are a part of. So just for you, I have come up with a model. You can let us know how you what you think of this model, okay? So leading from inherent awareness might look like this, okay? You, when you are leading from inherent awareness, you have the courage to just be right there present, right? You face experience directly and you rest in inherent awareness and as you do, you become more familiar with monkey mind, what it's doing in there, right? So you begin to tame it. And that's what is in the circle of self-awareness, the awareness of monkey mind and working with that. And then from there, once you have tamed monkey mind, your true being, your character, can flower. So the key here is starting with resting in inherent awareness is to develop self-knowledge. If we don't have self-knowledge, which comes from self-reflection, 
We cannot connect with our values. We cannot connect with a higher purpose. So what is character? Character is this quiet, reserved, value creating force of you, okay? The authentic you, the you that is reflected in the cosmic mirror that is untouched by external conditions. It is untouched by external pressures. So when you lead from this deeper consciousness, it will add energy, value, service, and contribution to everything that it touches. Okay, so your character emanating from this deeper place will inspire others and ultimately encourage innovation. So that's the model leading from inherent awareness. Okay, so let's get some of this. Want to get some of this? <laughs> Seems so lofty an idea, right? But I think you're still there. So let's try and get some of this, okay? Um, how do we do it? How do we do this inner work to become familiar with our monkey mind? Well, a profound way of doing it is learning how to control monkey mind through mindfulness meditation, okay? So this is a powerful practice. And here's the definition on this slide. Mindfulness is paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally, right? So again, the metaphor of the cosmic mirror here, non-judgmentally, okay? So through mindfulness, we be begin to see our habitual patterns and we begin to recognize monkey mind for what it is. And through the practice of mindfulness, we can connect to our deeper consciousness. And monkey mind becomes more and more settled down. We can actually use this practice to stop living our life like a checklist, to stop being on autopilot, just getting through the day, experiencing life as two dimensions rather than three. So I thought, what the heck, let's try it, okay? Um, let's try some meditation, mindfulness meditation. And if you've never done it before, no matter, I'm going to guide you through everything. Okay. So are you ready? Um, maybe Brie can see if there are a lot of thumbs up there. Ready, ready, ready. Yep. I think we're ready to go. Okay, so um, most of you are probably sitting in a chair. <clears throat> you could sit cross-legged on the floor. If, if you're sitting on a chair, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a sound meditation. It's a very, very, very easy way to be introduced to mindfulness practice. There are hundreds of mindfulness practices. Here's a simple one. So I'm going to ask you to take your seat, sit solidly in your chair, In the center of your chair like a king or a queen on the throne <laughs> and your spine is upright it's not rigid it's upright okay so you could say loosely upright you don't want your back on the back of your chair okay and your hands are on your knees and your feet are flat on the ground and your chin is tucked slightly and your mouth is slightly open 
and your tongue is on the roof of your mouth so that you're not clenching your teeth. Now I'm gonna ask you, and feel free to turn off your video if you want, just close your eyes, just listen. Just feel your body. Relax the muscles in your body. Your head. Your face. Your neck. Don't worry if you're a bit tense, that's okay. Just be aware of what is going on in your body. Relax your shoulders, back, upper back and lower back. Relax your chest, stomach, arms, legs. Just be in your body. Don't try and control anything, just be. Now I'm going to ask you to listen to any sounds that are available to you. A fan, air conditioning, coughing, birds, your neighbors, or no sound at all, the sound of silence. Maybe you hear inner sounds ringing in your ears, stomach growling. Maybe you hear your heart beating. So notice these sounds coming and going And when you find your mind wandering, that's okay. Just bring your awareness back to the sounds once again. So let's rest like this for a minute or so. Okay, that was good. So one of the benefits of meditating on sound like that is that this practice gradually teaches you to detach from assigning meaning to the sounds you hear. You don't pass judgment on them. For instance, you don't say, oh gosh, that sound was so annoying even if it's a garbage truck, right? Or you don't say that's a pleasant sound. There's just sound. The sounds 
do not have any emotional charge for you. You can just be with them and be aware in a relaxed state, inherently aware that you are listening to sound without judgment. We're just doing it. We're relaxed, we're open, not carried away by our monkey mind that is always evaluating in its screeching voice. Is this good for me? Is this bad for me? I want it. Okay. So when we let be and accept our reality just as it is, as a cosmic mirror, we are actually resting in inherent awareness. We don't take anything personally. Just like we accepted the sounds, we can be in inherent awareness all the time, not constantly evaluating, not taking things personally, just responding and reflecting to what is in a relaxed state. Because if you don't do this, the choice is monkey mind, who's running the show, who's commanding you to do whatever it wants. I, you know, I think about monkey mind, which is inhabits my mind quite a lot, to be honest. And uh, it, it just uh, it reminds me of this thing I have a tendency to do. Um, so I have this, um, I like shoes, right? I, I used to love to buy shoes because I, when I was young, I only had like one pair of shoes. So when I started to work and had my own money, I would, the first thing I would buy is shoes. I didn't even know how many shoes I had, just shoes and more shoes. So when I would go by a shoe store, I didn't even know I was doing it. Monkey mind would be in control. And I, I, I go into a shoe store and buy shoes. And then I say, this is ridiculous. How many shoes can you wear? So I'd say, um, calm down, monkey mind, get out of here. I'm not buying any more shoes. And then what? Before I knew it, I was coming out of a shoe store with, with more shoes. So um, learning to tame our minds takes practice, takes time. And it's a good use of your time. Let's just for a few more minutes Let's rest in open awareness. Let's, let's see how we feel after we do one more practice together, okay? So again, take your seat. Feet on the floor, hands on your thighs, chin tucked, mouth slightly open. You can close your eyes or lower your gaze. And I'd like you to just be, <sighs> pretend you just made Thanksgiving dinner for everybody in your whole family and it wasn't COVID times and you had 25 people over your house. You made the dinner, you cooked the turkey, you did whatever, you set the table, you cleaned your house, you even cleaned the corners in the bathroom that you never get to. They came, they had a great time, they all went home. <clears throat> And then you had to clean up after your wonderful dinner for two hours and you did that. And now you're just sitting in a chair, ugh, totally relaxed. Whoa. Just be. Whew. Just be. And if a thought arises, think of it as a cloud passing before the sun. The cloud is not 
part of the sun. The thought is not part of your basic consciousness, your inherent awareness. Just be. So, how do we feel now? Hmm? Feel pretty good? Maybe you could give Bri a thumbs up, or thumbs down, or I don't know, is there one that's like this, mezzo, mezzo, thumbs up? Okay. Um, you know, we could do this sound meditation or just resting in open awareness a few minutes every day. And even though it seems like nothing's happening. If we do this every day, we begin to experience what I call the correlates of mindfulness practice. We begin to experience Maitri, M-A-I-T-R-I, which is kindness towards self. When we become kinder towards self, we become kinder toward others. We begin to have a sense of what's important to us, what our values are. We begin to have a sense of purpose on this planet. Why are we here? This will help us to live this precious life that we have, even in these tough times, to our fullest. And in so doing, it will help cultivate our discriminating awareness wisdom and our skillful means, which you know the planet needs right now. So I think that's really all I have. I'd like to hear your thoughts. And if you've been doing mindfulness for some time, I'd like you to speak from your experience, maybe share your experience with others. And uh, Bree, maybe you could uh, monitor. People have questions in chat. Yep, so we have uh, just one question. And before I get to that, I just want to remind everyone to, um, you can either send in your questions uh, via chat and I'll read them out for you, 
or you can use the raise hand feature in the participants panel and someone from our team will go ahead and unmute you and you can talk directly to Ruth. Um, but to the question that we have right now came, came in from D. Jamison. They asked, how do habits relate to monkey mind? Yeah, um, well, monkey mind, you could say are um, unwanted habits, right? So we have some good habits too, like um, practicing mindfulness is like good mental hygiene, right? Like brushing your teeth, that's a good habit. Monkey mind is an unwanted habit and one that we're not aware that we actually are doing it, right? And so uh, an unwanted habit contributes to solidifying our story, right? It, 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 it solidifies our beliefs and uh, it just so solidifies our identity. So that's how it's, habits uh, are like a downward spiral. They become more and more solid the more you do them. Thank you. And by the same token, the good habits like mindfulness, um, they be, it's uh, unwanted habits are like a downward spiral, yeah. Uh, wanted habits like mindfulness and brushing your teeth are like an upward spiral. One creates dark, dark black karma and the other creates white karma. And uh, they just sent in a follow-up question. Do you re recommend mindfulness anytime or start out with a somewhat scheduled um, cycle? Uh, yes, to both. <laughs> <laughs> So the idea is uh, I do it as much as I possibly can, but at the same time, uh, I think it is good to get into a schedule. Um, I would recommend that you don't do it when you're very tired. Don't do it um, before you go to sleep and don't do it in your bedroom and don't do it when your favorite novel is next to you in your bedroom, right? So you wanna do it when you get up in the morning, when you're fresh, it's good to have the same time every single day that you're just gonna meditate for a couple of minutes. So I like to do it um, uh, first thing when I arise. A regular time would be good and also a regular place would be good. In other words, um, don't uh, sit in the room where the TV is blaring or whatever, right? You wanna sit in a, a very calm place, maybe even light a candle or burn some incense and um, it would be good to have a regular practice. The main thing is whatever you um, decide to do, say you wanna practice uh, two minutes, practice we just did, practices we just did. Don't break the commitment to yourself. That's not a good habit to get in. That's an unwanted habit. So uh, make it doable for you. If you only have two minutes, do two minutes, but do the two minutes. If you only can do it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, I, I put this last slide up because there are a number of mindfulness podcasts that um, you can access um, on this uh, with this link, uh, Key's SoundCloud account. And there's uh, quite a lot of guided meditations. You could um, play those as well. The, the point is to, uh, you know, it's like the Nike slogan, just do it. And our next question came in from Tony. How do you navigate working with someone who operates on habitual behaviors that undermine their own efforts to connect with you and others? Okay, say that one more time. Yep. How do you navigate working with someone who operates on habitual behaviors that undermine their own efforts to connect with you and others? Yeah, so um, look, you can role model how to be. You can't uh, change this person. And the more you tell this person how annoying they are, the more they are annoying you. So the idea is you can work on yourself. You can become more spacious yourself. And maybe uh, this person becomes less irritating. And you may even begin to have some compassion for this person's suffering, right? And maybe they, if, as you get kinder and more open, maybe they start asking you questions. Well, the worst thing you can do is tell the person to stop be, being so annoying. <laughs> Just work on yourself first. Develop your own self-awareness, self-knowledge. 
that would be a very powerful message. Thank you. And um, oh, and another question just came in. Are there any recommended books and audio uh, or podcasts that you can assist us in meditation and become better role models? Yes. Uh, so uh, I shamelessly recommend the mindfulness podcast, A Key, which you see the link here on the last page of the, your slide deck. Um, you can read anything by uh, John Cabot Zinn, Z I N. John Kabat-Zinn or, or J Joseph Goldstein or Sharon Salzberg. These are all uh, wonderful teachers. Pema Chodron. So there's wonderful teachers out there. And we can, we can uh, send you a list or we could post some names or, or books on maybe. Yep, three. from... Um... For anyone who uh, wasn't here for Ruth's last webinar, we did have a resource guide and list um, from back in April that I can also share out with you all after the session's over. And just a reminder that today's session is being recorded and it will be online um, in a couple of weeks for your review, as well as the slides will also be available online. And uh, please do continue to send in your questions. We have plenty of time. And we'll stick around um, if anyone has any comments or questions to share. And again, you can do that either via chat or the raise hand feature in the participants panel. Yeah, I'd like to hear from um, some people out there. I know okay. some of you do mindfulness practice. How is it going? Someone just uh, brought in another question. Um, how does mindfulness help you inspire others? Can you go over this part again? <sighs> Uh, it, it changes you. It changes your inner operating system. So you become calmer, less judgmental. You become warmer. You become more lovable <laughs> toward yourself and to others. So that's what you're modeling. That, how you're being. How you manifest your, your basic character is how you inspire others. So you work on yourself. That's where you start. And that's what eventually how you, how you manifest is what in fact inspires others. They're, they're attracted to your energy. They want to be influenced by you. They want to connect to you. Thank you. And I am just about to share the resource list from the previous webinar and the mm -hmm. chat feature for anyone who wants it. And I will also be sending it out um, after today's session um, with a survey evaluation and other relevant links for today. Um, but if and no one else has any questions or comments, I think we can go ahead and wrap up for today. Um, but we'll be here if you have anything you want to say. Yes, good luck with all this. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much, Ruth, for being here with us today. Uh, it's been so nice to have you back in the series and to close it out. It's a very timely and relevant topic. And I think a lot of people um, find great value in what you do and the knowledge that you're able to share with us. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure.